Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. Due to a last minute cancellation of our speaker, Sid Cohen, his program is not going to be presented tonight, but we do have three backup speakers ready to go as usual. The first one will be Michael Weinert, the second one will be Daniel Weinberg, and the third one will be Andy Anderson. The format of the College of Complexes consists of the following. Number one, our speakers will speak. Two, we shall direct a, we shall then have our question period. And in the third part, we shall be able to do our infamous rebuttal period. As usually been in the tradition of the college, it's always prone to excessive bloviation, particularly in the announcements period. As I said before, we don't have a speaker this evening because he canceled at the last minute because of the weather. So tonight we're going to be hearing, Charlie, what, 15 minutes each? I'll go 15. I'd like to speak Well, we got three lined up already. We have Michael Weiner, Daniel Weinberg, and Andy Anderson. If we have time, we can get you up here. Uh, we'll be with the open mic. What? Okay, we'll put we'll you on the slot. With the open mic. I forgot your name. No. Ellen, so now we have a fourth. All right, let's welcome Michael Weiner to the mic. Let's get on with the speakathon. All I'm going to ask is please be coherent and concise and make sure at least you're somewhat prepared. Let's go, Mike. <laughs> It's working. I'm going to talk on the subject, which is uh, the state that Sydney was going to talk about. Now, uh, when we say the state, uh, we don't mean uh, Illinois or Wisconsin. We mean the nation state. Okay? And um, the term nation state is used only in America because we're the only country that has, we're a nation, but we have what's called states in it. They, they don't use the term nation state in England, uh, Europe, Canada. Turn that up a little bit, Charlie, in the back. Is it better? Yeah. Uh, we, we don't uh, use the term nation, uh, I mean, uh, they don't use the term nation state in the rest of the world. We only use that term here, but uh, I state uh, Sydney was going to talk about uh, the nation state. Uh, the, the state or nation state is, is, uh, is, is peculiar to a, a form of a historical development. Uh, Originally, you had the primitive society, which was a communal-based society. Uh, after that, you had uh, warlord uh, society, which is in many ways uh, uh, more primitive or more brutal, uh, anyway, than the communal primitive society. Uh, after that, you had uh, kingdoms and uh, principalities which was uh, represented progress over the uh, 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 brutal and uh, chaotic uh, warlords <laughs> society that you had. Um, now, um, you know, forgetting uh, somewhat about the Dark uh, Ages, the Dark Ages, you can say, well, what about that? Uh, that's kind of out of place. The Dark Ages uh, didn't represent progress. That represented actually kind of going back in history. It, it, it was um, it was negative uh, progress and out of place. So it, it's in there, but it 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 seems out of place because it's not in that uh, progressive uh, continuum. Uh, under uh, kingdoms and principalities, then. Um, uh, the economics uh, of that uh, were um, uh, feudalism. Uh, it was a feudal society uh, in, in its uh, social form and, and its economic form. Now, uh, mercantilism got its start, though, and started to supplant the feudalism, but not in uh, all of its regards. Um, uh, after uh, feudal, uh, feudal uh, economics, uh, you had um, uh, uh, mercantilism. After uh, now, mercantilism developed into uh, a nascent uh, capitalism, 
still under uh, uh, kingdoms and principalities uh, until uh, uh, revolutionary societies, ours, uh, uh, France's. Uh, now, this was progress, and this ushered in uh, uh, a form of government that we call now the, the nation state. Okay. Uh, this was progress. Uh, the nation state made uh, democracy possible. Um, now, uh, democracy uh, isn't necessarily uh, part and parcel of a nation state, but the nation state made democracy possible. It, it uh, made uh, republicanism possible. What is republicanism? A republic is uh, is representative <coughs> government. Okay. Now, representative government or a republic is not necessarily democratic. Um, Rome had a republic, but it did not have a democratic republic. Okay. Uh, ancient Greece had democracy, uh, but they didn't have so much uh, a republic. Uh, so the, the, the combination of uh, uh, democracy and a republic, that, that was, that was a, another uh, step forward in progress. That's what we have. So the nation state was a very progressive uh, form of society. And now, uh, what, uh, what I say and, and what Sydney uh, says is uh, there's a time when any society, though it starts out in a progressive way, eventually becomes uh, repressive. Okay? And that's what the nation state represents in civilized society today. Um, it, it, um, in order to protect uh, the capitalist economic system, uh, nation states have gotten more and more uh, repressive, uh, have adopted uh, increasingly more uh, undemocratic and uh, anti-democratic uh, principles in order to protect uh, the capitalist uh, economic system. So this is why we're seeing what we're seeing. This is why uh, uh, we're seeing uh, politicians that are in favor of maintaining capitalism resorting once again uh, to fascistic uh, measures. Uh, we're seeing the rise of fascistic uh, movements in America, in France, in Germany, and uh, in uh, England. And uh, this is part and parcel of the nation state, which is uh, an outmoded form of society in, in the sense that it can be used for repression. Okay, Can it be used for something good like it used to? I don't think so. Uh, Sidney might say, yes, it can. His idea is to have a Marxist-type revolution. Uh, excuse me. where the state, uh, although being used in a restricted manner, would be used on behalf or, or by the 99% uh, to repress and affect the 1%. And he would say that that's a more democratic thing. Uh, I, I myself, uh, I don't want to steal uh, so much of Daniel's uh, thunder. Uh, I used to consider myself a Marxist, and I still use Marxian analysis. But my idea, I don't, I, I don't call myself a Marxist anymore, as uh, Sydney still does, uh, because I favor uh, a society, a future society, along the lines of what the anarchists uh, advocate. Uh, I would still be very happy with this type of society that, um, that Marx advocated and that uh, what Sydney advocates. Uh, it's just that I would be even happier if uh, there was a society such as uh, Pierre Joseph Proudhon, uh, French anarchist, uh, Mikhail Bakunin, who I believe was a Russian anarchist, and uh, Kropotkin, which I'm not sure was a Russian anarchist. The type of society that, that they prefer. Uh, so that, uh, in a nutshell, is uh, the nation state. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Daniel will talk uh, more about um, that from from the anarchist standpoint, uh, uh, 
I don't know. Are, are we having uh, questions and answers in, in this? Yeah. We will after with our after other we're, speakers yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so th th that's it from me. Thank you. All right. All right. Good. 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 It's working. The microphone's working. Any of it reattached? Okay. Hello? Hello? It's working. Okay, okay, okay. So, anarchism. You want it back in the stand? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, okay. People are leaving their hands on. All right, so I got cold hands, so I'm wearing gloves. I got a cold hand, but I'm wearing a hat. Louder? I'm wearing a hat because it's cold in here. And I'm wearing my gloves because it's cold in here. Yay! They're freezing us out. <laughs> if you agree, clap. Please clap. Yay! All right, thank you. Hey! Oh. Come on. <laughs> but seriously, anarchism. I'm a Marxist. I am a Marxist. I like all the Marx brothers. <laughs> Zeppo, Harpo, Chico, and Groucho. <clears throat> but seriously, anarchism. A N A R K I S M. Anarchism. So I I, I go to an anarchist. I I'm a participant in a anarchist demonstration once a week at. Logan Square, and the, the leader of it is an anarchist, a real living, breathing American anarchist. And so what does that mean? I don't think he's a Marxist, he's not a Marxist, he's not a Leninist, he's not a Stalinist. He's just like anarchy. And so what is an anarchist? An anarchist related to the state. The state is this big thing that is basically made of war. A state basically is for war. I mean, look at the United States. They're in 180 countries, and this is the government of the America to defend our way of living. Yes, to put on, to defend oil, to defend uh, the ability to sell food all over the country, to bring in all kinds of food and. Tea from China and stuff like that. And coffee from Africa. Coffee isn't grown here. We have to bring it here. So we have to defend ourselves to get that coffee here. So it costs a lot of money. Millions of dollars. We get tax. And this is the government. So we build big buildings. We build Hancock Center. We build the Trump Tower. And what is, who is that does that? The state does that. Now, an anarchist state would have little buildings, small buildings, no 100-story buildings. Because why do you need a 100-story building? Who needs it? Do you need it? Raise your hand if you think you need a 100-story building. How many of you live in 100-story buildings? I see nobody. See that? You're the like capitalist of the group. But, so, okay, so Emma Goldman was a famous anarchist in the 1920s, and then, then what happened? The state got, got mad at her. The state got upset. We don't want an anarchist running around the country getting people interested in anarchy. So what they do? They sent her to Russia. They said, get out of here. Get out. Just go. Take a trip. Go to Russia. And she was born in Russia. So she went to Russia, she met with Lenin. She didn't like Lenin. He thought, she thought he was a jerk. So you know what she did? She came back to America. And she, went, she lived in Canada, actually, Toronto. And she gave talks in Toronto, she talked in America. And then you know what she did? She went to Europe, she gave talks there. And then you know what she did? She died in Toronto. 
So Emma Goldman was a great dinner. And my family, Charlie says he is not a Russian, no connection to Russia. My father used to say, You're, I'm full of blue blue. In Russian, Yalu blue means I love you. So you probably heard blue blue from his parents because they were Russian. They spoke Russian, they spoke Yiddish. They spoke Romanian, and then they came to America in 1920, and they weren't Russian anymore. They were American Jews. So, there. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right. But seriously, some people call me a Stalinist. The anarchist in, at the uh, at, uh, uh, demonstration calls me a Stalinist. And you know what? I don't like Stalin, but he still calls me a Stalinist. <coughs> I think that's a, a code word for something else. So in 1920, about a hundred years ago in this great country, on the New York Times front page, there was an article that said the anarchists, Bolsheviks, and revolutionaries are gathering for the uh, July 4th demonstration, and the armories are filling up with um, soldiers to, to protect the city. What do you think of that? I think that all these anarchists and Bolsheviks, they didn't disappear. They're still in America. Not everybody was deported. But they just aren't on the 7 o'clock news. or 6 o'clock news every day. And the New York Times doesn't have stories about anarchists, Bolsheviks, and revolutionaries very much anymore, especially on their front page. But that being said, all American presidents aren't for anarchy. The Republicans aren't for anarchy. The Democrats are not for anarchy. But I am. So have a nice day. Thank you. Next. All right, next speaker, please. Andy. Ellen's coming up. All right, Ellen. And a girl, Ellen. Fifteen minutes, Ellen. Excuse me, I'm finished my food. <laughs> Okay, hi, I'm Ellen Corley. Uh, I love this College of Complexes, the Free Speech Forum. Uh, it was, I met, I learned about it originally from Don and uh, Doug a few years ago. Um, it's a great need that we need to expand in our world. Uh, I, I grew up with a uh, neo-liberal, uh, actually libertarian uh, stepfather who kind of, um, I went along with his arguments, kind of seemed like Republican for many years because I couldn't win an argument basically with him. Um, and uh, he basically was an Ayn Rand, uh, friend of Ayn Rand's, managed her books, worked on Wall Street, knew Alan Greenspan, and. Uh, Milton Friedman and um, Ayn Rand, and they uh, worked for Oppenheimer and research, and so, you know, they had all the money and uh, it figured they were right uh, about things. But I am a questioner. When I first moved there, I said, uh, I'm, you know, for, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And um, he said, that's communism. So I had to uh, keep basically questioning things. And um, I think actually uh, a person that ended up being the wisest person I know was actually, um, he read closely what Jesus said and um, kind of modeled himself on that. And he believed that Jesus was an anarchist and a skeptic. And I, I that makes some sense. So, um, but I think, you know, you question things, uh, you notice what he really did, and um, 
you know, you do want to question the empire, I think, which is kind of what you're talking about with the nation state. Uh, this, actually, one interesting, you know, at this stage, I'm 63, I uh, have now um, ended up inheriting money, so I don't have to work now, and I can really just think what I think. And um, I've recently gone and joined the Colonial Dames and been looking at Ancestry.com and determined that on both sides of my family, there's the we were like the first family of Virginia. The Wyatts and the Lees came over in 1610 together, and uh, they were more of an aristocratic kind of group. Robert E. Lee came from them, and Washington, and um, Jefferson, you know. But uh, this guy Lee... Um, Bunch of damn Federalists, I'm sure. No, they were anti... Well, that was before the Federalists, but they would have been anti-Federalists. But they... Um, it's really interesting how it goes back. So I've been looking at the Tudors and uh, pre-Tudors in England and studying it on television. You know, they've got a great series. And, you know, this idea that throughout the first, you know, um, going back to 1300, uh, they, you know, they would win a contest and become king, but there were periods of time where gradually yes. they, uh, there were these verges or, um, you know, there were communities that were more, um, you know, a king that really did give gradually parliaments more, more input, you know, um, basically so they wouldn't rebel, you know, um, but, but there was always these wars of secession, you know, that people kill each other and wage war. Uh, this whole empire thing is a big problem, right? Um, and so gradually, I guess these ancestors came here, um, you know, when they were warring with the, between the Henrys and who's going to marry who to be the king. And they were Christians. I mean, if you look back at the Romans, there were the you know, kill, 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 but they'd come and just, they're a nice bunch of Christians living in peace and they'd slaughter them up. You know, um, that's what has to stop, right? This idea of slaughtering people uh, for money and um, power. You know, there needs, there was this Magna Carta, you know, put in it in the 1300s and, you know, this constitution, my answers, there are three of them signed it. This, um, one Lee said, you know, never was such a good bunch of people come together to sign, you know, he organized the colonies to come together. They were against slavery. They were, they really, you know, this idea of organizing, using your free speech and your, um, your leadership and your, uh, you know, Christian, you know, do to others as you have them do to you, right? Um, that, that works at periods of time, but there really is a, uh, I mean, I, I see it in my own family. Things make a lot more sense. I'm for good, I'm selfless, I try to do well, good for everybody. I have a sister that's very selfish and she just, you know, is organizing it for herself. I think that's what it comes down to. Machiavellian, you know, they have a real big influence on the Federalist, uh, the Federalist Party. It goes back to Hamilton versus Jefferson, um, you know, they, the Hamiltonians were banks, and um, goes back to the to the Illuminati. Um, you know the right the war. They would get countries in debt. Um, it's all for selfish war, uh, money making purposes. You know, we capitalism does not have to be. I I was all sold on the idea, kind of like Tim of. I mean, if capitalism and democracy are different, they could line right up together and the government could really care about what the people want. And it could really, you know, work really nicely, just like a, like the invisible hand of the market, you know, um, right? We're gonna, that's the kind of governor governance I'd like to be. That's good governance. That's what they teach in business school. Unfortunately, lately, what's happened is this 
some, my stepfather would talk about this, the supply side decided trickle down economics will work better than supply and demand. So they pretend that, oh yeah, the free hand is always looking for whatever the demand and we'll give it the supply. But the truth is, they, I'm a market researcher. I have my sense is there's no market for market research. It's all just, the bankers are putting the money where they want it, Let's, where they're going to get some return, where, and um, it's, they deregulated it so that, you know, the Democrats used to say, well, you know, let's make it a little bit fair, you know. Um, we, this is what I mean by science. I'm going to give a talk on the war on science, but science would be as if, you know, the governor wants to be scientific. What do the people need? You know, let's, like King Arthur, give them what they need, you know. Um, Unfortunately, my, you know, Malcolm came into Camelot and started dividing and conquering, and you can get everybody at war if you spread lies and you remove the, the truth from the media, you know, so that free speech, people don't really, we can't really make meaning, you know, we're, it's not like, if you, this is a free speech forum, do we, are all the topics coming up or are they being selected? and? You know, so are all our needs really represented? You have to survey and find out what people want to hear about, what policies they want. If you look at the mayors of up now, they, um, I think they've been put in by the top, by Rahm Emanuel's and the, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, backed by, uh, fortunately, the, these banking interests, the central banks, you've got, um, the Bank of International Settlements, and they have been wait. You know, banking money is going for war, right? We are all we're going to keep going. And they need the enemy. Adam Curtis talks about this. You know, Iran, Russia. Uh, let's divide everybody up. You know, um, it's it's lies. This, they always had to have a false flag in order to get us to go to war. They had to make a big, you know, like we're under threat, okay, like 9-11, right? Um, we, you know, go for the war on terror because those Arabs are after us. It, everybody knows that it wasn't the Arabs, you know. Um, Arabs, why? You know, they didn't have the motive. The people, you follow the money, the people that wanted this were the American empire builders um, who wanted to, um, you know, we... There's a lot of money in selling bombs, you know, exchanging between Saudi Arabia, the, the bombs for oil, for dominance, full spectrum dominance of the world, um, you know, by the few, you know, fraction of a percent. They now know the Golan Heights are, is controlled illegally by, for oil by um, Rupert Murdoch, uh, Dick Cheney and um, Rothschild, Lord Rothschild, um, they, you know, all of this is there, but you can't get uh, the newspapers censor it. You know, that's why we needed what you call a real free press in order to really maintain a, a grassroots democratic republic, um, you know, as they... Uh, really what Jefferson, who I'm allied with, you know, believed in a real, the uh, Democratic, Robert E. Lee, uh, my ancestor, or cousin, um, he believed, actually, he was, Lincoln had offered him the Union Army, and he didn't want it, he stuck with Virginia, but he, he wasn't all that into slavery, right? It, what, you know, the slave trade was an ugly, horrible thing, really, pushed by the, these huge East India, whoever they were that were maintaining that slave trade. It was very, the free speech forum people, the abolitionists who tried to fight it, who did eventually fight it uh, and overcome it, but they, there's this great series called The Abolitionists where you see that they tried to hang Debs, um, Eugene Debs and uh, you know, burn down the free speech forum. Um, there was a lot of hanging of people for free speech. You know that uh, 
because you know why they they can become fascist thugs you know working for the self-interest of somebody and, and that's really what I think is going on now is there's a war I my topic really isn't the war on science so much as a the um, they're, they're not being scientific, right? There's a, a line, but there's a war on labor, you know? It, 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 we're like, we have to be forensic historians. We have to look back in history and learn from it, or else we are bound to repeat it. It is true. And the, the way they, you know, the laborers fought so hard for uh, for rights and an eight-hour workday and um, regulations and all this, but the there was a manager's revolution went in at the same time as J. Edgar Hoover and throwing out Emma Goldman and putting in immigration laws and this this is this the CIA or a kind of police state you know started with the FBI and the um, you know the the forces or militarization of our country. They didn't even have police before, um, you know, back in 1600s, right? There were things were kind of agreed upon. But this idea of a police state is a very, very dangerous thing that, um, you know, it, we've got to, as a, as a democratic republic, um, find some way to demand, right, regulations uh, that that's what I'm primarily focused on but I'll finish this up but you watched uh, Jason Van Dyke in the hearing yesterday they finally I mean the injustice if, if justice is not blind and uh, it's actually rigged so that the police are, get immunity and the, they can imprison wrongfully anybody for as long as they want which is what we've got now Three percent, maybe a third, are wrongfully imprisoned. They they estimate one third of all women in the military are raped by their uh, supervisors, gang raped, whatever, and nobody says anything. That's you're going to end up with a very barbarian like country, and um, it, it's going to be very hard to stop if truth is not the norm, right? And um, there's a big the 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 state, nation state, has the power, might beats right, you know, as they said in Camelot, um, you know, the, it's, it's just a fascist state, right, um, and that, it's always, that happens, uh, if, if we don't, you know, as Benjamin Franklin said, it's a democracy if you can keep it, you know, but if, it's going to take a whole lot of, Education is required. That's why they came up with public education. Um, you know, I studied John Dewey education. We, we were always talking free speech. What is a school? What is a, you know, critically thinking, asking ourselves, what are we doing here? We, we have to all be philosophers, right? We all have to be Ooh. philosopher kings, right? That, um, but this big lie that, that these University of Chicago Federalists society came up with that Plato was, you know, uh, uh, wanted his own kingdom, you know, like he was like a philosopher king, he's a czar. There's, there's always this smearing and lying about what is communism, and, and that's a, a big, I really want to get to the Supreme Court and say a war on communism is a war on, it's, it's against the First Amendment. It's a war on everybody. We're all communists. It's just a philosophy. It's just a religion. And the fact that our institution can wage a war and use their guns and their power to stick us in jail for being a communist or send us out, you know, because or I'm a Marxist or I'm an anarchist, that's scary stuff. And that, that's not who we are. Okay. All right. Andy. Thank you, Alan. She said it That was 
a good summary of a lot of pieces of where we are. You got a question, Tim? No, I'm You're just scratching your ear. You got a question? Yeah, didn't Franklin say a republic if you can keep it and not a democracy if you can keep it? Yes, that's exactly the way he said it. It's a, Benjamin Franklin said that. It's a republic if we can keep it, basically. Uh, I'll make a few observations here that cover some things that the other three speakers didn't. Uh, we're supposed to have a representative government in the United States. We have a Congress, we have a President, we have Congress, we have a Supreme Court. Those are the three branches of government, aren't they, basically? Um, executive, judicial, legislative. Well, the Citizens United decision in 2010 from our Supreme Court came down and they made it official uh, with a ruling and thousands of words and everything else. To summarize it in 25 words or less, they said it's okay for billionaires to own and operate people masquerading as politicians. So you have uh, billionaires right now that have been pulled into the Trump administration and they are backed by other billionaire criminals. And these people, like Rick Perry, uh, or not Rick Perry, but uh, I, the whole list of names it, it escapes me on a lot of them. Betsy DeVos is one of the heirs of the Amway fortune, billionaire. She has no business running the Department of Education. She has absolutely, you know, it's like they hung a sign over the White House, an individual sign for if you're, if you're rich, and know uh, the dog whistle words, you can read this. But basically the sign says, as soon as Trump got control of the White House, it says, if you have no ethics, no morals, and no conscience, and you are rich, and you're willing to do any kind of crime to help enrich Trump and other billionaires, come on down. We got a job for you. And right next to that is, is a flashing, invisible neon sign that says, if you have decent ethics, morals, and a conscience, and you want to help the American people after you get elected or run these offices, if you want to do good things for the American people and the environment, don't even bother to apply for a job. Those are qualities that if you possess them, if we find people in the government that are still trying to do that, we will fire you, fire those people, and put in a compliant corporate criminal. So in every major uh, head of office, you know, the environmental, uh, environmental regulations, Department of Education, uh, Department of Commerce, uh, anything that um, regulates pesticides, chemicals, drugs, anything that is going to regulate these industries and cut into the profits of billionaires that would make more and more if it's just okay to kill a few people every now and then if overall you make a lot of money serving selling the product to the others, then that's what we've got. I thought the topic was the state. What? I thought the topic tonight was the state. Yeah, I'm talking was, about our state yeah, as it is yeah, right it's, now. No, you got to be generic. Okay. Um, not just criticizing. Well, no. My, no. my talk has two basic parts. Quick. Well, One is uh, where we are and one is hope for the future for the country of what our country can do. Yeah. There's no reason, you know, there, what good does it do to talk about uh, the State of the Union 200 years ago and what it was supposed to be? We're, somebody who said we're hip deep, in the, hip deep in the big muddy and the big fool says to push on, well that's where we are. We're up to our eyeballs in crime emanating from the White House on down. We have our Congress, uh, the Republican side of the Congress, Senate and uh, Congress, with the exception of a handful of Democrats masquerading as Republicans. That's the greatest intellectual whorehouse on the planet. These people are bought and sold. Illegal. What do you say, Charlie? They're not doing anything illegal. It's, it's illegal to take bribes. And uh, you're supposed to be a representative of the people. And, and uh, we just saw we just saw a bunch of representatives get elected who are planning to represent their constituencies. A breath of fresh air. They're called progressives, and they're and they're not like the politicians we've had for the last 40 years that don't care what the people think. Once they get voted into office, they just start doing what they want. 
you know, seventy percent of the people in this country want affordable education, but none of our representatives have moved in that direction in the last twenty years, up until this election. People want universal health care. People are sick and tired of having to go bankrupt because billionaires are treating health care as an opportunity to take everything a person has and then just let them die. That's the system in America. If you can't pay for medicine, uh, we're sorry your kid is dying because you can't afford the medicine, but we need our billions. That's the message from the people who own the drug companies, the people who run the hospitals. Oh, they pay lip service to it. And everybody pays lip service to representative government, and we go to polls and vote. And then when we vote people in, and then they just thumb their nose at us. And the group of representatives that just got elected by a wave of young people is a breath of fresh air that we haven't seen since young people mobilized after some students were gunned down at Kent State almost 50 years ago. That was a turning point. When the, the, when the Nixon administration gave the go-ahead to fire live ammunition into unarmed students at Kent State to cut down the protest, then we began to get a little change. And for 10 years, up until Reagan, we had a change. Hopeful trends. If, if our country is going to have a future, we're going to have to recognize where we are and move in a positive direction. Um, there's a group called Sunrise. If you guys haven't heard of it, look it up. It's an army of young people that are mobilizing votes nationwide. Who here knows when was the last time we had a, a, a big voter turnout bigger than anywhere near this last mid midterm election? Where does that one rank in, in voter turnouts midterm between presidential? Anybody know? No, it's, it's the largest voter turnout we've had in this country since 1918, in World War I. And the press didn't cover it because there's, art, there's articles well, there all over. There many people. What? The country was smaller. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're talking about midterm elections. But in any case, in modern times, another, another fact that the press never covers is no Republican president that got control of the White House, including Trump, no Republican since Eisenhower, who was honestly elected, has been elected without massive treason and fraud to get control of the White House. The American people are not electing these criminals. They are stealing the office time after time, and there's a rise of something called Fox News. My brother coined the term the Fox the propaganda blow, uh, blowtorch. They spew poisonous, toxic fumes all over the public, and they maintain about a third of the public, which is a lot of retired people, a lot of white people sitting on a couch watching Fox News, and they go vote for criminals. And uh, the rest of the country uh, is, you know, wondering what can we do. Well, there's a, there's a criminal, but they're not in jail. That's exactly my point, Charlie. We saw that. You keep saying they're criminals, but they're not. If you look it up, the Trump administration, the Trump administration right now, the Trump administration right now has people that were involved in uh, mortgage fraud and all kinds of crime in the financial. Uh, you know, they pleaded guilty, they played fine, they paid fines, and they avoided jail time. And then there's other types of crimes where people are involved in crimes, but they're not yet prosecuted. Was Reagan the, what? Was Reagan the good president? Ronald Reagan, uh, the question was, was Reagan a good person? Well, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan was an actor. Ronald Reagan didn't really run the country after his first year when he was an attempt on his life. George Bush you know, and, and the corporate criminals ran it. For, and then uh, up until 1992, the public got sick and tired of that face of the corporate party, and we got Clinton for eight years. Bill Clinton was one of the best Republican presidents we ever had. He set the stage for the, the, the crime wave of Bush and Cheney. We've had almost unparalleled crime coming out of the White House and our government okay, since the 1980s. Five minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up. You want to go to questions and answers then?
Is I'm going to take 10 minutes. I want to take 10 minutes. I want to take 10 minutes. my watch wrong? What do you got? What time? I've got uh, 7.09. Okay, I'll, I'll finish up here quick. I want to take 10 minutes. No, that's fine. We got, we got time tonight. Um, for those, I'd like to uh, give you some things to uh, look at for information that you don't get on TV or in the newspapers. Uh, Common Dreams is the best news site I know of for reporting the best of the best every day. Truth Out uh, has a writer named William Rivers Pitt and uh, an environmental writer that's traveled all over the world named Dar Jamail. And he, he has, they, they've got pictures of the ice melting at both poles. There's no longer any, any debate at all that climate changing is happening faster and faster every year than what we thought. And that's why the latest estimate is 2030. The human race has 12 years to get a massive World War II mobilization going in the next five years and do a lot between now and 2030. Or they're looking at uh, Miami being pretty much uninhabitable right, by 2040. Uh, take it easy, Charlie. No, no problem. I'm, I'm not running over the time. We've got plenty of time. No, you ran over. <laughs> Why don't you stand up here and hold a sign that says, look at me, I'm dumber than a fifth grade. Come on, Andy. Hey, that's Andy. 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 No personal attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Personal yeah. attacks. Yeah. Well, if you're going to attack me, I'll call you out. No, no, no. 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 Turn the other cheek. <laughs> yes. No gunfight. We have a rule, no heckling, so let's have no heckling. Oh. Somebody is trying to, you know, uh, it's, somebody's trying to finish a thought, let them finish it, don't heckle. I have a question. Okay. The, uh, the other thing, I have two other things to say. One, I said one of them, common dreams and truth out are way better than anything you'll see on the mainstream news. Those two websites are loaded every day. With the best of the best, they're like they're just like CNN or NBC for putting up pictures of articles and everything. But they give you a, a, a decent blend of what's really happening and hope for the future. There's this, uh, and as they said, a Swedish student, student named Greta Thunberg, a couple months ago, started a school protest, protesting for climate change, taking a day off. Now she takes a day off from school once a week, once a week, and is in school the other four days. That school strikeout movement has gone viral all over the world. The United States press is not covering it at all. It's one of the top ten blacked out stories because they're talking about protesting for climate change, a, a new what's called a new Green Deal. That's the World War II mobilization, like what happened right after FDR you know, started the New Deal. We need a Green New Deal mobilization, and it's also about economic justice and jobs, living wage jobs, and shutting down the billionaire predators that run the fossil fuel industry. So that's what it's all about, and there's an army of young people risking their lives and careers to cut into the profits of the fossil yeah, fuel industry. So, uh, yeah, they are, Charlie. I, I thought we said no heckling. We go to the park and set a One bullet at a time. Come on up and uh, you know, give your rebuttal, Charlie. I'm through, thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! You want to go next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll, give you, we'll give you 10 minutes. It's not, it's not rebuttal time yet. This is still part of our... If you, if you want to say something, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I really didn't intend to be part of the regular program. But I'm always so annoyed when I hear the phrase, this is not who we are. Now... You've heard of Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission, where uh, bad governments have been, bad governments that have been thrown out have been brought before the people, and their crimes have been reviewed before the people, and they are asked or forced to compensate for their crimes. And this is considered very um, cathartic for the people who were tortured or in prison or whose families were killed. This is what we, what some countries do when their governments are, have gone off the rails. Okay, so if we're not the people who separate families and people constantly say, 
this is not who we are, then why did we start doing that? Uh, 500 years ago, when we first started the slave trade, we were taking children away from their families from the beginning. And then when we began, then when we settled uh, the West, we took the Indian families and we took their children away and put them in schools and forbade them to speak their own language. This is who we are. And if we do not face that, we're never going to be able to correct it. It's not to say this is who we are. This is, I mean, it's not to say this is not who we are. We should say this is who we are. But we don't want to be that way, and this is what we're going to do about it. Because it is who we are. We, we waterboarded the Filipinos a hundred years ago. We were waterboarding. This is who the United States has been. Now, don't tell me that we don't waterboard people today, or in the last ten years, because we do. Yeah, and this is who we are. So if we don't want to be who we are, then we have to say, this is who we are, but we're going to change it, and this is how we're going to change it. But to pretend like it's not who we are is not going to work. There's no reconciliation. There's no... Um, uh, uh, there, there's no forgiveness for doing these crimes, you have to be asked to be forgiven and you have to say, I'm sorry. And we're not saying, I'm sorry, we're saying, this is not who we are. Well, I have to say, I disagree. It's who we have always been in this country to separate children from their families, to go in and, and produce genocide on Native Americans, to um, torture our enemies, to, well, you can just look at Okinawa today. The people of Okinawa do not want the, is it Honshu uh, um, naval base on their beautiful island. We don't care. Who we are is we take the naval, the property for the naval base, and just take it away from the people who live there and send them to the sea. Uh, now, it's not just the United States. Indian, and I mean East Indian, okay, Indians from India. They are taking people off of property that they have farmed for generations. And the, um, the farmers have have to move to the city and their brains are not adjusted to living in the city. And they cannot find meaning for their lives in the city. And they commit suicide by the dozen. The same thing happened in Scotland. The Scottish Highlanders had their farms and they, uh, you know, and they had their sheep. And they passed the Enclosure Act. Help! So that, so that if you could put a fence around a piece of property, it became yours. So the Highlanders were forced into the city because the uh, powers that be came and put fences around their property and then claimed their property and they had to leave. And uh, when I was in Glasgow, we went under a bridge. And uh, our tour guide said, this bridge is called the Highlander's Umbrella because that's where the Highlanders went when it rained. So it's, it's who we've always been. My view is that the human being has to evolve into being a different kind of an individual who really would not even consider separating a child from its parents and forbidding that child to speak its own language. That would be an evolutionary step forward because who we are now is not who I want us to be, and I think most of the people in this room don't want us to be 
genocidal um, family separators um, or taking people off their farms and drawing them into the city where they have no meaning in life. These are just such far-fetched examples. I think that another example of this is the, is the novel Heart of Darkness. Although I read that novel twice and I don't think I understand it very well. But anyway, I just wanted to say it is who we are and if we want to change it, we've got to admit that. Excuse me, what novel is that? Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness? Joseph Conrad. Yeah, Joseph Conrad. Well done. Thank you. I would also, too, like to remind you a little bit about who we are. We're the greatest nation on earth, probably the last vestige of freedom around. And if you look at the evidence, I think it speaks clear. We are probably in one of the most greatest flowering of human knowledge and intellect in the last, in the world. And the worldwide, we're seeing a worldwide reduction in poverty. We're seeing a worldwide increase in literacy. We're seeing more people fed, housed, and clothed on a worldwide basis because of free trade and capitalism. Now, if anybody can't see that, you're not looking at the evidence. What we are is a nation of, yes, we do have our dark sides, but we also are a nation where we freed the slaves. We gave the black civil rights. We welcomed immigrants. Yes, it does run in cycles, but you know, I'll tell you something. Be great that we have the power of the ballot box and we respect the outcome of that ballot box. What, what really galls me is to hear all of us focus on the bad. And I think that's exactly what a lot of us are doing because of the 24-hour news cycle, of the proclivity to hear nothing but the bad things on the news, I think we're missing a lot of the big boat. According to an economist, Johan Norberg, we are in the middle of the greatest flowering of human democracy and human innovation around the world. You see, for example, look at the example of just a smartphone, the fastest, in, in, the fastest invention around the world. And if you look in the Middle East, the old adage comes in, Oliver Twist comes to town and they know where you live. And that's a lot of it because of the smartphone. You're not going to see these tin horn dictators around for much longer. They may last a little bit of time, but over time, you're going to see the widespread adoption of democratic elections and democratic ideas. And for those of you who think that socialism works, as far as I'm concerned, you're dead wrong. We've been through this before. A lot of the conditions that we're seeing today are a lot like pre-World War I. And yes, sometimes what does the labor do if they're being taken advantage of? You go unionize. You go protest. And you break up the monopolies to the monopoly laws that were enacted under Teddy Roosevelt. Yes, we've been through this before. The, our last recession was basically because we abrogated the principle of truth and credit. We had liars' loans go through. We had a lot of those things. Banks would lend to some of these clowns maybe 30 years ago. Now they do because, oh, it's a, it's a thing we got to do. They don't have the personal responsibility to hold those loans down. For me, if you don't like the country, get out of here and find some place that you would love yeah. to live. And if I, I, like, I like our country. I think our design of government is still the best in the world. Yes. Although it may not be the best in the world, got it. democracy is a bad form of government, but it's better than all the others. With that, I'll thank you and let's move on to questions. Well done, yeah, well done. Here, here. Got a question. All right, Andy, take questions and let's get our. If you want to go up there, go ahead. Questions and answer period. People want to come up. Uh, Use the I have a question. 
Yeah. She has a okay, question. First question. Go ahead. Come on, this Do you think Bush knew about 9-11? What? Do you think Bush knew about 9-11? Well, the question here was, uh, did Bush know about 9-11? Uh, the answer to that is yes. So the Bush Cheney administration helped orchestrate it. Uh, so, and there's, for those of you that are laughing, there's no debate on that case. It's going to. Uh, one question. I have a question for the audience. Does anybody know about the grand jury that's been assembled in New York? No. The grand jury has been assembled by the uh, Attorney General of New York to hear all the forensic evidence that's been sent to him about the criminals that orchestrated 9-11. And so it's it's going before a grand jury now. It's no longer in the speculation stage, as Charlie would put it. It's moving forward like the back of an asbestos. Thank you. Okay, who else has a question for any one of the speakers up here? Why did he wants to go? Questions before Roberto. I just wanted to make a point of clarification here that while global warming is a fact. Our uh, best science says that it is not caused by burning fossil fuels, but it's caused as a natural phenomenon that occurs every so often throughout the ages. I just want to make that clear. One other thing. Uh, Tim said that if you don't like it, you can go someplace else. But the fact is, the ideal is my country right or wrong, when right to be kept right, when wrong to be put right. Thank you, Tim Bolger, and uh, thank you, Andy Anderson. We did have a question. Uh, the young man over there had a question, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, come up too, though. Can the question we'll try to answer. Go ahead. Yes. Can the speakers come up? I guess if they want to. Yeah, come up. Come up you can have a talk. Yeah. It's questions right now. No, I was saying he had a question. But he's asking yeah. you the question. Come on. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. You, you yeah, had a question for me? Or maybe. Uh, Oh, I was just whether you could come up or not. Who's your question for? Who is your question for? Uh, that was my only question. What, what is your question? That was my question. Would you repeat it? Next question from anybody. This is questions and answers, people. I have a question for the rest of the people. Could they shut the hell up? Yeah. Does anybody have a question for the various people who were like speakers yeah. up here? Charlie, what is your question? I'm relatively surprised by this great scholarship that the topic is what is the government, what is our government? It's defined in the preamble of the Constitution. And not no one on the panel or speakers even reference that. The preamble? You don't, you don't think our government is, the purpose of it is to establish justice, ensure tranquility, and promote the general welfare? Well, uh, yeah, to rephrase what I said before, that was the purpose, okay? Um, that that, that uh, purpose uh, has been uh, subrogated so much that it uh, really uh, doesn't have uh, the meaning and it, um, the, um, the society that we have now um, the, the powers that be uh, are ignoring that so much uh, that uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, unfortunately, uh, empty words uh, these days. Uh, yeah, uh, he's absolutely right. We used to have a representative government. That's how it was designed, a republic. It's supposed to serve the people. But what all of us are trying to say now is the conditions are different. Uh, no, I don't think anybody here realizes that the Bill of Rights and all of our constitutional rights, none of those things apply to anybody in this room that is not a billionaire. The Patriot Act passed right after 9-11 has provisions in there that says any citizen can be arrested 
without probable cause. They can make up anything. They can accuse you of something, a phone call to some nefarious group. You can be arrested, disappear without a phone call, sent out of the country to a black site somewhere. Your family won't know where you are. Now, they're not doing that across the country nationwide, but those laws are on the books, and a few people have been disappeared. And uh, the media doesn't talk about this because the, the public would become outraged. The, our media does not cover what is truly happening behind the scenes because they fear that people would begin to demand their constitutional rights. People, we, everybody thinks we live in a government that's represented and that our representatives represent us and that we have rights, the Fourth Amendment and all these kinds of things, the right against search and seizure. So they don't talk about the SWAT teams and everybody else that's breaking into houses in the middle of the night with no warrant and everything else. It's going on all over the country. And uh, you know, my car was broken into by police practicing uh, without a warrant or anything else when I was off uh, on a two-day vacation with the students. So uh, I have first-hand knowledge of this, and a whole, millions of other people do too, but you can't, that's one of the things you can't talk about on television or you just you lose your job as a journalist. Uh, I've been talking about that for 10 years. You can't talk about certain things in America, newspapers or television, or you just get fired and blackballed. That's where we are. So this, we're all working, and whoever said, if you don't like the country, leave it. Um, I'm a, I'm a Vietnam combat veteran. I served two, three years in the Army, two years in Vietnam. 1968-69, I would like to take back the country from the criminals that are running it. Now, I, I'm an American. I'm a patriotic American. I've always been a patriotic American. I like America. I think it's a great country, and I don't think we should allow our White House to be, and, and the Congress to be, continue to be disgraced by these people that aren't our elected representatives, that they're, they're hand, hand, handmaidens of the corporate billionaires. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, to build on that, uh, I think it's so important that, to recognize that when 9-11 happened that the purpose was to put in these Patriot Act that suspended our rights. So they basically said this was a Carl Schmitt's idea. He was Hitler's jurist, lawyer, legal philosopher who said, you know, now we've got the Reichstag. We, um, we're being threatened, we're uh, you know, at war, so we suspend rights, we're now a military state because we've been threatened. That's the danger of a, of a nation state, military state, and that is what the 9-11 laws did change. I'd also want to say the contract with America, dangerous, but part of that, all of it went through, the Republicans signed on it, and a big part that we were talking about today, a uh, criminal justice um, interfaith group that our friend was there, but the contract for America put through the National Security Restoration Act, which put NATO over the UN, and we don't even know it, but you, that's why there's no peace. It's always, you know, three parts war, two parts peace. They always win. And we don't even know the laws. You could say that's lawful. Well, that's because a dirty lawyer put that on, a Hitler lawyer put it on the book, said that's the new law. Uh, you know, that's, that's tyranny. That's fascism. Uh, I, I just uh, want to thank Tim and other people for pointing out the positive side of history and the positive side of American history because I do definitely lose sight of it. Uh, as far as the preamble to the Constitution goes, we the people of the United States in order to form a perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and provide for the common defense. Defense, is that the next one? Isn't that provide for the right. common defense, promote the, the general, well, promote the general welfare, do ordain and establish this Constitution. Okay, promote the general welfare. Okay, even, even as they wrote this, they did not include Native Americans. We the people did not include, oh. You didn't have any women and blacks in Well, that's what I'm saying, I was getting to that. They did not include Native Americans, they did not include the slaves, and they certainly did not include women or children or who else. 
anyone but white male race black. persons. Yeah. Okay, oh, white, white, white male property owners. Right. I think that Muslims were included if they no. own property. No, okay. Well, I'm, uh, all I'm saying is now we're paying a lot more attention to black people, Native Americans, women, yeah. children, yeah. Um, did I name somebody else? Uh, you know, but you get, you get my point. We are paying more attention. And we are beginning to uh, bring uh, bring these people into the phrase "we the people" because they didn't used to be included. Um, and I wanted to. I, I also I want to thank Tim for what he said because everybody we all need reminding all of us pessimists. And the second thing is Trump has made us stand up and take notice. And you've got to admit that he, he's made us alert. And we've, we've elected, not we, but uh, people have elected uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We know what the Democratic Party did to Bernie Sanders and we're furious about it because it was something that happened that was really obvious. Um, and, and now there's two Muslim women and two Native American women in Congress. Um, anyway, I just, you know, I'm conflicted between us separating families, genocide against the Native Americans, holding slaves for 400 years, all of this stuff, it's, and, and then continuing the slavery, as you can see with the Laquan McDonald thing, I mean, it, do black lives really matter? I, I think that um, from the look of things, we've made progress, but um, this is not enough right now. We need to really move forward. Who has a question? You know, yeah, the the All right, we got yeah. time for questions still. It's only four or eight. Anybody have a question? Uh, we want, we, if yeah, we want to, we can go into rebuttals. Can we go into rebuttals now? Yeah, you like it? Or is it Any other good? questions? And Let's go into rebuttals. It's written by white, rich white guys. If general welfare applies to everyone. General I'm sorry, folks. You don't know how to interpret the Constitution. <laughs> no, I'm not good with the Constitution. Let me say something. All right. Well, I'll make a final note. Uh, Charlie is absolutely correct. Uh, the Constitution has uh, spelled out uh, a whole bunch of rights that Americans are supposed to have. And there's a giant gap between what the Constitution says are our rights and how those uh, rights are being uh, trampled on or not applied to certain segments of the population. Uh, the other speaker said, we may not like some things in the country, but we can do better. We, uh, we have smoke-free restaurants now. It's a lot easier for people with asthma to breathe. We have, we've stopped putting tobacco, uh, asbestos in buildings, but we move forward on that. Knowledge moves forward in the direction of truth. Tim is absolutely correct. Things get better, and you know, many technological improvements allow us to live better lives. And there's a huge green revolution going on right now in energy that our press is not covering, but it's spreading worldwide. And we have we stand a decent chance of having a cleaner environment and better living conditions, higher quality food without pollution in it from uh, pesticides and things. There's a revolution in organic farming happening. There's all kinds of good things happening all over the world that we don't hear about. It's, and it's because the people that run our government, temporarily, we hope, are keeping us in a bubble of mythology on many different subjects. So, uh, an informed citizenry, we've seen that in the last uh, year and a half, especially the last month, Many different authors are saying exactly what was said here. Uh, an informed citizenry, our founding fathers said, is essential to 
functioning, a good, you know, a good functioning government. If the people don't know what's going on, how can they hold their politicians and representatives accountable? And that's that's my take on it. I, I try to help people find sources where you can find out what's really going on, not the mythology that comes out over the airwaves and in the newspapers. So that's it. Charlie, you have a question? Yes. We put together a group when the Patriot Act was passed called the CCCLR, Civil Libertarians of Rights in Chicago. We still have the Yahoo group. I even put up the website. We spent $200 lobbying efforts in various things. But however, the group has disbanded upon an active because there's been no issue with the Patriot Act. Now tonight, I heard two speakers that said, there's all sorts of things with it. Now I really don't understand how the members of our group, all very active and currently active civil libertarians, we had academic conferences, we tied into the ACLU, yet we have no issue with it that we can raise. What evidence do you have that it's being applied? Well, it depends on uh, what state you live in. It depends on uh, what issue you got involved in. There's, uh, there's a classic saying uh, over and over again. They say, well, there's no reason to fear this law if you're not doing anything wrong. But, you know, some people go for years and never hear about an unfair prosecution or somebody that got arrested in the middle of the night over in another state. You don't hear about these things because of the news blackout. They're in books, uh, different kinds of books, uh, journals, magazine articles, of various places that are under the radar report these things that are going on, but the mainstream media doesn't. And so, so you have no examples. I don't have any examples in my head right now. She might. Yeah. It might we just got up and made assertions that it's slap teams and everything. Yeah. And yeah. our group is interested in this, okay. and we're not aware of it. Well, come on up and... You have, you, you have, have an answer. answer. You have yeah. an answer. That I have information okay. you came across. All right. Answer, answer Charlie. That Charlie, I Charlie, all right. I got an answer. Uh, Chris Hedges. You know Chris Hedges? Yeah. He brought suit against the United States. When the Patriot Act came out, he, char he brought it to court, the federal court, that, that section that uh, Andy was talking about, the, the one that people, uh, the government can take a citizen off the streets without habeas corpus, without any rights, without due, without due process, and bring them to a country and question when them. What's this? What? It's rendition. When was this? That's in the, it's in the Patriot Act. Yeah, well, when was it? When was what? When did it when did this happen? It's been going on. I don't know. All the time. You don't know? I don't know. They, yeah. can't do they can do it. They can do it. That's yeah. the point. Right. They, 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 There's no examples of it? Yes, Roman Square. It doesn't matter. Roman Square. They're right there. Can I go to a congressman? He's going to say, how many incidences are there? Well, anyways, so, Francis brought the suit. The judge, actually, the judge said, okay, that's unconstitutional. That part of the Patriot Act is not legal, according to the Constitution, because everybody has to be given their rights. So, before anybody was... Uh, we know that. Well, how many times does it happen? But then, but then, you know what happened? That was a Friday. That was a Friday, about 2004 or five. Anyway, so listen, the Monday morning, the Obama government, the government went into court and had that reversed. They said, so? So that means the government can do something illegal. 2008, Obama went in, right? No. It went to court. I'm telling you, court. It's just an amazing. There's no other reason. Maybe it was Bush. Maybe it was the Bush. You can't give me an example. Yeah, well, I can give you an example, Charlie. Let me just. The congressman would say, yes, this happened in my district. No, yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, okay. he'd say, no, okay. he'd say, is that illegal? Charlie. Is that unconstitutional? Okay. If he doesn't care, then he's a schmuck. Mm -hmm. he's okay, just a you do it. Yes, it okay. okay, Luke asked me to read this. The first known foreign 
rendition of the U.S. by the U.S. was that of air, airline hijacker Fawiz Yunus, who in September '87 was abducted after being turned lured on a yacht in Italy and brought to U.S. for trial. And so he's going on about all these renditions. Um, you know, you have to return somebody. But I, you could talk no. about that. But Charlie, let me give the answer to your question, as I understand it, is that. You, you know, they put in the Patriot Act, and after 9-11, within seconds, um, it was planned, and they suspended, you know, everybody voted, okay, we are at a state of war, we've been attacked, they're, like the FISA Act, you know, was, um, the, there's, they've given themselves power to do stuff and not tell us, things are classified, things are redacted. They, um, they pick up this guy, they take him to a dart site, they waterboard him, you know, at Holman Square, right here in Chicago, they get rid of him. They, like it used to be, they weren't allowed to surveil. We could use our CIA on foreign countries, stop the communists, now because if they're on the telephone with us, that means we get to do, pick him up because he's communicating with the terrorists. But it's basically, the war on terrorism is a war of terrorism. They are, they're terrorizing us. Our own state-sponsored terrorism is a police state. You've got it in Israel, you've got it in the U.S., you've got the M.K., whenever intelligence, CIA, which was started by Reinhard Gellin, the game with Alan Dulles, we didn't have a CIA before. But then afterwards, they, Truman said, when they shot Kennedy, he goes, I didn't mean for him to be covert operations all over the world. Covert operations mean they do it secretly, and they have given themselves the power to do it. They call it lawful because we're at war for, with the whole world, and they, even though they started this war with the whole world, it is, it's an evil takeover of the world by this criminal coup that denies, it's a deep state because it denies that they're even there. Any other questions, or do uh, you guys want to go over Other people can go over the bus. Yeah. Uh, isn't it a fact that uh, instead of waterboarding and torturing these people, that it's only <coughs> necessary to lock them up in a room and play Christmas music to get them to tell us whatever they want? No, no. They that would be torture. They take their clothes off, turn the heat down. They've got a million. It's called the Reed Method, that we are trained, our police are trained in this. In the Reed method, of if you see making a murderer, you see the Central Park Five. You look at what they did to um, Mikhail Ward, you know, down there. All of them. We use this method. We were taught it from Israel. They put them. They they leave them there for hours. They just say, "Can I go home?" They're usually retarded and, and tired, and then they just say, "Sign this thing," because they're so tired and they can't stop. They go, "You know what you did. You know every, you won't win anyhow." They break them down. You can go and see all these transcripts. Luckily, now they hold the camera up to it. But even to this day, if you look at the Central Park Five, Donald Trump was calling for the death penalty for these kids. And if anybody bothered to investigate, see, our police don't investigate. They control. They are a state of, like, military. And, you know, they... It's, it's just crazy, but that's why all, tomorrow, I wanted to tell everybody at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock at Trinity, we're pulling together people from People's Law that, that are exposing the torture victims, and we're to, looking for a strategy to stop torture by our police. This was trained by Operation Phoenix from Vietnam, brought over by Burge, daily protected him, Divine protected him. Now they've got protect, special prosecutors protecting them. This is, torture is not who we are, but that is, that is who we are, and, but it's all classified. They'd have to shoot you or put you in jail, like they did COINTELPRO if you blow the whistle on them. That's why they tried to put Edward Snowden in prison, and that's why they, WikiLeaks in prison, and they put, um, Dan, you know, Daniel, what's his name, who? Ellsberg. Ellsberg in prison, right? It is, um, you know, it's a state where to tell the truth and be a whistleblower is a crime. That's when you know we have a problem. Sunday, what time and where? Oh, 
2 o'clock at Trinity UCC. That's the 95th. Um, I think it's 450 uh, just off the highway. It's called Trinity UCC. Trinity United Church of Christ on 95th Street. Okay. Why is it most of you speakers I perceive are dead wrong? Uh, Tim asked, why is it that most of the, our speakers up here... That's because you're dead right, dead right wing, well, yeah. and you think left wing is wrong. Yeah. The answer to that question is, uh, our country is divided like the Catholic Church was once divided between people that know about the pedophile priests and the people that don't. Now, most people in the Catholic Church are aware because it's made the news, they, they've removed some priests, they've prosecuted others, and now you can no longer deny that anybody claims it's a pedophile priest. Oh, you're dead wrong, just like Tim just you're said. You're dead yeah, wrong about the skin. When you it. say you're dead wrong, when somebody gives you a summary of thousands of scientists or people that have produced the database, it's it's a we have kind, decent people all over this country that don't yet know what is happening on a particular subject. Now it's now it spreads from person to person if it's not in the news. It doesn't mean that it's false, it means that you don't know about it yet. And that's that's why we need speech forums like this, where people can come and say, here's a body of knowledge. There's 3,000 scientists that produced the report on this. Uh, they spent their lives working on it. It's not an opinion of one guy that you can stand, well, he's wrong, he's got an opinion. No, it's not my opinion that the sun rises in the east. It's not my that's opinion science. that there's snow out there. That's, that's documented reality, and that's what we're working with. Charlie? Yeah, it's for you. You mentioned the Sunrise Movement. Now, in the 115th Congress, the Republicans passed all sorts of pro-coal and pro-oil legislation, got rid of all environmental regulations. So along comes the Sunrise Ecological Movement, and their very first protest, they protest the, the new Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, who has a 92% pro-ecology lifetime record for the environmental community. Yes. Why would you protest someone who's on your side? Would you like an answer to that question? Yeah. They are protesting Nancy Pelosi because by all accounts, she is trying to slow down the spread of the new progressive activist progressives that got elected to Congress. They're being withheld, not appointed to critical committees that could really move the country forward on progressive issues. Mm -hmm. And also, the, they, they went, Nancy Pelosi, rather than uh, the Republicans in the minority in the House, they protested Nancy Pelosi because she's the Speaker of the House. And the message they're sending, that makes sense. the message they're sending each of these, these powerful people that have control is step up or step aside and let somebody else face the problem. We have to face the problem now, not farther out another four or eight years like what we would have had with Hillary Clinton. That's the most ridiculous answer I've ever heard. Well, Andy. that's exactly what that's Andy. She wants hundreds of people. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let, yeah. I'm not going to let this go. I can answer. Hold on. Charlie is sitting back there saying that's nutty when yeah, virtually is. hundreds of people, analysts on the internet, have reported exactly what I just told you. That's why they're protesting because we need action from the speaker okay. now, and she has the power to do it, and, and she's dragging her feet. Okay. Yeah. I can say yeah, something. She, she got a question over here. Is there a coup? What? Is there a coup? Is there been a coup d'etat? Yeah, I would say, I think coup? there's been a coup, basically. The Republicans, uh, yeah. And the, even trying. the Democrats, uh, the people who bag Nancy Pelosi and Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer are basically the, the state of Israel and APAC and, and the ADC and all these people, the, the lobbies, the NRA, the, the lobbyists, the billionaires, they are there to, they voted for war. And that's one issue they're never going to back off on. And so I used to think, oh, Democrats, they're all progressive. They're all going to, you know, be good for the environment. I, I think what we realize is, you know, there's a duplicity. And essentially, thinkers like Sidney Blumenthal and Oliver Stone, I heard them both speak and told me to their face that there has been a coup. But it's whited out by our military. But the 2016 election, the 9-11 takeover, the shooting of Kennedy, 
Uh, going back to Robert Perry, who does Consortium News, and also right. a great source of news. I wrote him, he wrote back, he says, okay. we need a congressional commission into the Cold War. Ever since the World War II, there's essentially been a coup when, you know, Alan Dulles worked with Reinhard Gellin and, you know, brought about, they waged war on the whole world. It's called the Fourth Reich, is what um, Jim Mar okay. says. All right. Uh, I, I'd like to rebut something that Tim said. Um, I'm a patriot. I love this country, uh, which means I love the people, my, my fellow Americans, if you will. That doesn't mean I have to love the regime, okay? There's a difference between our great nation, and it is a great nation, and our regime, okay? Patriotism doesn't mean love it or leave it. It means you want your country to be the best country it can possibly be. Yeah. Uh, maybe it means I don't want my government to go around kicking ass all around the world, okay? Mm -hmm. And especially where there's oil underneath the soil, okay? We didn't go uh, uh, policing when the, the, the Tutsis and the Hutus were going at it in, in Africa. Well, what a coincidence. Uh, there were. They weren't lucky enough to be living where there's a uh, oil reserves underneath. Do you think there's a difference why our government didn't go in there when when these tribes are slaughtering each other? But Maybe we, they did. Yeah. at the slightest we excuse, we, we go into oh, yeah. the Middle East. Okay. So it means wanting your country to be a good world citizen, and it wants it means wanting your country to be the best possible country for, for us Americans. Okay. Yeah, I, I, All right, Ellen, we got to go to rebuttals. I know. Now. I got, just have to follow up on we that. We got to go to rebuttals. So oh, yeah. Let me say one thing since we're talking about states that, you know, um, it's, there's so much pressure with this BDS and um, anti Semitic uh, charges on people who talk about Israel. There's a difference between the Israeli, you know, the state, the war state, and the people. I, I love Jewish people in the state of Israel, it's fine. It's the ones who are dividing and conquering us, using the state to go to war, the military state, the forever war, the for political warfare. It's dividing and conquering us. And that's where, you know, it's so easy to say, Russia, aren't they bad? I mean, I don't know that they are, but maybe Putin was or bad, or maybe Stalin was bad, or maybe the Bolsheviks are bad, or maybe Lenin was bad. But we, we cannot let, it was really the evidence shows that the deep state created the Bolsheviks so that we would have an enemy to war on. They wanted to keep the war going. Let's, you know, sell some more guns and bombs and nuclear war. And so we have to look at the people. That's what communism was in the teens. It was anarchy, basically, but it was just, yeah, we believe, you know, more welfare. And then, but they, they created it like a Bolshevik by sticking, you know, bad people in there and having them do bad things to people. To people go, oh, they're going to come do it to us, fear-mongering. That is, you know, they did a PR campaign on P on socialism, right. anarchism, okay. democracy. So they were all like painted with this communist brush by our own government waging propaganda on us. And there was a Gillette Act in 1913 that says the government okay. does not get to keep doing propaganda with our money forever, like a forever campaign. Thank you. All right, let's go to rebuttals, Andy. I still think I've never heard more hogwash than in all my yeah, life. Really? Yes. I want my three bucks there. All right, let's go. Rebuttals. We'll go four. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with the international. We'll go four minutes. Something. Okay. So, you guys are in for a treat today. I'm going to tell you about myself. Good. Right. What party? International Logic Party. Actually, my bad. I should have put this in backwards. So, I'm going to give you our website, which we might be using during this presentation, if you'd like to. It's egora-ilp.org. That's egora. Egora-what? It's right here at the bottom. Egora-ilp.org. You're going to be able to find this file on that website. So, this here... This is my ideological profile. 
it's, what is it, six pages? One, two, three, four, five. Five pages long. Now, there, an ideological profile has a specific construction. It is a list of 23 ideas ranked from 23 points down to one. Uh, outlining what is my ideology, my political philosophy, my fundamental philosophy that relates to my political philosophy. And then the other ideas are a development of that philosophy in laws and social issues. Now I'm not going to go over all of this right now. I'm going to pick one of these ideas for you and I'm going to tell you what I think about stuff. Great. So let's see. If you are on the website, egora-ilp.org, and if you click on the PDF, that's the ideological profile listing, and then if you look up my name, which is Cezare Urevich, um, you're going to be able to find this idea here in the 11-point position. In order to reduce the impact of our society on the environment and to enhance the stability of both our society and the environment, we must make immediate efforts to switch the vast majority of our energy infrastructure, at least civilian, to sources of energy that are not destructive to the environment. In, short, in the short term, this means relying more on renewable sources of energy, such as solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, and nuclear fission, when safety can be ensured. In the long term, this means developing nuclear fission technology for a practically unlimited source of energy. The first method towards achieving these goals should be through placing additional costs on all pollution from energy production such as a carbon tax. The second method towards achieving these goals should be through government financing of research in sustainable sources of energy such as nuclear fusion. The third method towards achieving these goals should be through removing any incentive for continued use of non-renewable energy sources. The fourth method of achieving these goals should be to incentivize the retraining of workers from fields in non-sustainable energy to fields in sustainable energy. You know what? That's what I think. It could be better. You know what? If you have a better idea, I'd love to hear it because that's what this system is based on. Now, um, here's the thing. That's what I think. But guess what? I'm not the only one. If you look through that PDF, you will see that there are, let's see, um, 12 other, well, 11 other people around the world who have this exact same idea in their own ideological profile. Word for word, dot for dot. We agree, at least as it is, until somebody puts forward a better idea. Now, why does that matter? Well, that's where the other PDF that's on that website comes into play. It's called the Idea Dominance Index. This, now, this idea is in the 11-point position. That's how many points of support I give to this idea. Other people give other points at whatever amount that they feel they, they want to give to that idea. On the Idea Dominance Index, that shows you the ideas ranked by how strongly they are supported by people around the world. Guess what? This idea is in the second position around the world. Ultimately, sorry, I'm, I'm being called on time. But just to wrap up, the goal is when our website becomes fully functional, we're going to be able to nominate political candidates who represent these ideas. Political candidates who actually represent what the people really want. So what we need is growth. What we need is for you guys to come to our meetings to see what a real functional democracy where people have the power really looks like. In our meetings, we lobby each other for the support of good ideas. If you think this is a good idea, I want you to make your own profile and support this idea. If you don't think it's a good idea, provide a better one because I'd be happy to support it. Enough complaining. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks. Alright, next, uh, next speaker. Can I answer a question? Yeah, go ahead. You know, the government supports all of this uh, the energy system because they're taxing it. We get we get tax on the meters that are running gas and electric to our house. And if we get off the grid and we start our own production of energy, then we get taxed for having to sell it back to the electric grid. How are you going to get around the fact that the government's sitting there with their handouts to make money off these people who are killing us? I don't know. How are we going to get around that? I think I we should know. come to a meeting and I think we should discuss it. Ah, uh, good. All right, next speaker, please. By, by a lot of, uh, yeah.
Our next speaker. My, my speech today is very positive. Go to uh, Google Weinberg Art, W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G-S-A-R-T, or go to artpal.com, A-R-T-P-A-L.com. Y'all writing that down? No, what's that have to do with... Politics, politics. A lot of, there's a lot of politics on my what, what, what? Speakers can do rebuttals too. No, but uh, he's just pro Come on. he's just prolificating for about a few minutes. All right, let's like let's get our next speaker up there. All right, let's go. All right, let's get a good, good clear and coherent rebuttal. Have all of you self-professed anarchists? Yeah. Or those who think Marxism will lead to statelessness really thought things through? Yes. <laughs> Which of you anarchists support public libraries? Yeah. Library. Anarchists supporting public libraries. Yeah. Which of you anarchists support public sector unions and public pensions? Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Yes. You can choose. So there are some anarchists who do. Do that. Which of you anarchists support public schools? So yes, you, you anarchists support public schools. Like five people. Which of you anarchists support taxing the rich? All the way. No, there won't be any rich people. <laughs> Which of you anarchists support regulating Wall Street? Yes. There won't be Wall Street. Yeah. Wall Street Don't worry. <laughs> Which of you anarchists support universal health care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five people in yes. tomorrow, Monday morning. <laughs> Which of you anarchists support a jobs guarantee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. None of us. Yeah. Which of you anarchists would have banned guns? Uh, no. Yes, no. 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 Oh, yeah, well. Are we going to have a revolution? If you guns? get rid of guns, I don't understand how you can extort people into paying for all these government programs, which seems to contradict uh, yourself if you're an anarchist and you support government programs. Anarchy is statelessness. Anarchy is not democracy. No, you're One fool at a time! I'll define anarchy. One fool at a time! Yeah, Charlie. Pinko Kirby! Shut up back there. Don't yell at the mic. Okay. How much government is needed, Marxists, before the state will wither away? Huh? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think you anarchists or you Marxists are thinking things through. Why do you progressives want more government that you already complain is corrupt. That's a good thought. What? We're just questioning. I never said it uh, works together. Government is corrupt and awful, and I'm an anarchist or progressive or Marxist. So let's get more of it. No, you have a revolution. This doesn't make any sense to me. I have never understood why anarchists support government. Don't worry me. They want less government. Anarchy is the no, these, anar these anarchists here seem to be okay with government. Small government. Small. Small go Yeah, yeah. S a small government that taxes the rich and provides universal health care. George Washington once said, government is not reason, it is not elegance, it is force. Like fire is a dangerous servant and a fearful master, neither for a moment should it be left to irresponsible action. I think giving government more power is an irresponsible action. And if you're an anarchist and want government, then you're not really an anarchist. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Next speaker. All right, I'll be quick, John. Uh, very quickly, young man, Columbia, uh, your definition of anarchist, you failed to provide it. An anarchist in, in the traditional term is somebody in which the government takes the side of one segment of the population, such as the rich, against the others, the remainder. And yes, you do not want government that's impartial. I suggest you study a little bit more political science in the traditional thing. No. And you do not want 
You do not want government that's arbitrary and capricious and under the control of one segment. No, that's the traditional meaning of government. And it is nothing else, these things about less or more government is not the case. So anarchy and government you are know, synonymous with each other. It's, 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 if you want, it's misgovernment. Very I, that's simply. the first time I've ever heard this definition. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I've hung around with enough anarchists. You probably just pulled that right out of your I, head. I, I, I've hung around with enough anarcho-syndicalists over the years uh, and one of our mainstays of the college for years was an anarchist. So we've heard this for many years. And yes, it, it's misgovernment. So that means you're for inautocracy, right? What? That means you're for inautocracy, right? Well, I don't know what that means, but I have to think about it. Regarding the Patriot Act, I, I went to the congressman and the senator and I said, I'm concerned about the situation regarding federal employees, and he said, how many are there in the state of Illinois? I said, 44,308. Then I went to the congressman, I said, I'm concerned about the situation regarding federal employees and the shutdown. The congressman said, how many are there in Chicago? I said, 8,312. You guys come along and I'm supposed to go to these individuals and say, I'm concerned about the Patriot Act. And they're going to ask me, well, how many applications, how many situations do you have regarding it? And I said, I don't know. I went to the government many years ago and I launched a thing on investigations and testified before Congress. The first thing they asked me was, Mr. Petty, this was investigations in the federal government that were either not being conducted or being conducted improperly or not being conducted at all. The first thing they did, they asked me and said, Mr. Paydock, do you have any instances or examples of this? I said, yes, sir. I have 18 right in my own, in my, in my federal offices in the Chicago, Illinois area. And I was prepared. I, I didn't go, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, yes, sir. So this is happening. Now, the last thing I know, I like the Sunrise Movement. I spoke about them. You weren't here, Andy and I uh, gave a whole lecture on it, but I don't understand this. If they're young people, and I really don't understand how skipping school for one day a week is going to do something for the ecological movement, but this young man, apparently, or young people seem to think it is. I would presume if he did something for the movement on that day, then that might make it worthwhile. Now, I am really, I'm sorry. When you go to Congress, and if you've got somebody who's got a lifetime record of 93%, meaning like they voted against you once out of about 100 votes, you know, you make a courtesy call and you say, I thank you very much. Thank you for your past support. We look forward to working with your office in the future. And we certainly appreciate it. And you, and, but you don't protest or complain. You give them bad congressmen a hard time. Come on. All right, thanks a lot. A lot of fun here. Charlie? Yes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the fact that we've lost manufacturing in this country, and in particular aluminum and steel. And um, under the, basically, the, the definition of communism is that basically all the means of production are owned by the state. Is that not correct? I mean, the, the, the government owns the... the, the they nationalize the, certain the, industries on their right. so, so occasion. In, in a situation where the United States is no longer competitive in the production of iron and, uh, and, and steel and aluminum, do you believe it's appropriate for the government to, to open manufacturing plants and produce these items that are necessary for our economy, uh, even though they may be producing them at a market loss? just so that we do have the means of production in this country? You know, well, like I'm not an economist, huh? and you know, and, and, and you're getting into protection, 
of industry or something? Is this a leading question? No. I mean, it certainly part, sounds like, if dollars. you want to ask me a legitimate question, I'll answer it. A legitimate question. Don't ask me a leading question. <laughs> it's not a All leading right? question. Thank you very much. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah. Way to get out of that. Yeah. 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 get out of here. Yeah. 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 Order! Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jonathan! I would be remiss if I didn't start before I gave the rebuttal. How many people the next time Sid's going to speak would be willing to pay 3 to $5 to get an Uber to pick him up? Just had to throw that out there. That's what you do in a democracy. You help your fellow sister and brother get to their speaking engagement. Only the fight for us. Didn't mean to, you know, suggest socialism there, but there it is, democratic socialism in action. Anyway, boom, boom, doors closing. Warning, don't let a failed system become a failed soul. In case of failed state, do the following. Number one, follow your instincts. Follow your heart and soul. Number two, remain resolute. Don't bite on any shiny hooks. Do not buy into the propaganda and the BS of the ruling class. Number three, movements can help our minds think clearly. Go to non-corporate sources of journalism at your local bookstore, local newsstand, or local library. Find out what skills you can develop. Read what the options are for your interests to be nurtured, and then pursue what you wish to make your life's work. Find that thing that you can do work which enlightens, heals, builds, grows, protects, teaches, assists, invents, researches, remembers, creates, empowers, and loves. Number four, go to the library at least once a week, read, reread, write, rewrite, edit, re-edit, print, and share with others. Accept constructive feedback, grow, improve, Strive, exceed your expectations, set goals for your work, commit yourself to a disciplined life. Number five, join a grassroots organization, contribute your time, your we ideas, your energy, your support, your donation, your solidarity, like here tonight. Number six, keep your mind free. Go from the old adage, our minds have a natural capacity to be freer each day of our lives. Number seven, Strength in numbers requires powerfully honest communication. Number eight, undemonize the most powerful liberty we have, the liberty to mass mobilize. They have extreme wealth right now. That's not disputable. They have extreme power right now. That's not disputable. They have extreme influence right now. That's not disputable. They betrayed our trust, misspent our taxes, wasted our time, murdered countless innocent children, women, and men, ecocided the biosphere, and squandered opportunities. What we can do peacefully and democratically, and this is still legal, believe it or not, in the United States of America, is join together without any ego, and enact a civilization-based system that raises quality of life, liberates, reparates, affirms dignity as a species on planet Earth, meets all sustainability goals, and empowers an equitable, global, worker-led cooperation of first mass solidarity. That's what civilizations, civilizationists call it. We don't call it any of those failed systems from the past that's a big trap door. It's something new, it's something American, it's something human, it's something, at the risk of sounding ridiculous, of earthlings. Thank you for being in touch with your humanness and for absolutely refusing to allow Mother Earth to be destroyed by treasonous oligarchs, plutocrats, overseers, parasites, and extinctionists. This has been a public service announcement of, by, and for we the people of Earth. Doors closing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
sorry. That's all the good Americans, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Hi. 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 I'm Vicki Elberfeld, and I've come here regularly, but not been before this mic, apart from announcing the coffee houses at the Ethical Humanist Society, where I'm a member. I am here up here tonight to support what Caesar has said about the International Logic Party, the Igora. I have been going to these meetings. And one reason I haven't come up here is because I, I tend not to think I have any ideas. But with the challenge to come up with an ideological profile, I have to have ideas. And it seems more global to me than purely politics. Some people think, oh boy, another third party. No, it's not that at all. It, it's really an intense exploration of your values, of, of what you want to see happen in government and in community throughout. What better way to develop your values, your, your articulation of your values, than by bouncing them off other people? So it's a big challenge to me to create this profile. Also, working with others is a great challenge to me. I, I've come from another planet, and I've been studying your species, and frankly, you're not all that easy to get along with sometimes and work things out with. But I'm doing my best trying to hone my ideas, and this is a remarkable challenge that you can all accept. So, I invite you to one of these meetings. You can find out more, and you can also stop by there if you want to talk to us individually. This has the meeting dates. Have a good one. All right. To me, he was a more pragmatic uh, 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 I'm uh, so I don't have to read all this stuff. And I have seen all kinds of The 19th century anarchists that I really studied are Benjamin Tucker and my and they're fairly consistent. Yeah, Spooner is pretty We're pretty much every holder in here, so we're going to adjourn for the night. Nobody else has any questions. All the sound. Okay. Thank you all for coming tonight. Stay warm, and we'll see you next week.